The scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 22. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who came who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. These are the words of God. May we add our blessing unto them. Amen. 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 Welcome to uh, the Lenten season as we continue this uh, time of uh, introspection. This is the time when we really focus inward and, and just do a kind of a checkup on our, on our spiritual well-being and where we are in our walk with God. Because all that we do through Lent ultimately should be leading us to a closer walk with God. And I, I know as I get older, uh, you reach a point in your life when you probably have fewer, fewer years left than you have in front of you, and you reach that point in your life that you're really, you're really seeking some kind of a, a, a justification, some kind of an affirmation of where you are, where you've been, what's happened in your life, accomplishments, failures, all of those things just kind of add up to be who you are as a human being. I, I remember early on in my, my life at uh, Claypool United Methodist Church, and uh, it was set up on a hill overlooking beautiful Huff Creek, West Virginia, beautiful place, and uh, up on the hill was a big cemetery, and all around the bottom of the, toward the church, closest to the church, was all of the newer graves where you could see the, the newer, the more, the, the, the better technology that, of, the, of, the, of the engravings of the tombstones, you could read very well the, the time of the birth and time of death and, and read the names, but back up on top of that cemetery, it kind of leveled off. And there was a place up on top that the gravestones were just pretty much smooth. You, sometimes you could make out a little where there had been some chiseling done because some of the gravestones were actually sandstone. And so if you look at sandstone after a few years, sandstone just kind of wears away from erosion. So there were smooth headstones on top of that. Those people had passed away, and now there was not even a record of where they had lived, who they were even. Uh, I'm not sure there's a record at Claypool Church somewhere that shows where those graves were and who they were from the early 1800s. But there's a point in our lives, in all of our lives, that our gravestones become smooth. There's a point in our lives when we've passed away, and there's a point in our lives when all those that have gone before us, at some point, they just, we just kind of, we just kind of lose track of who they are. The memories have faded, the records have been lost. You've seen headstones like that, haven't you, in, in Greenbrier County? As, com as uncomfortable it may be for us to think about, there's going to be a time in our lives that sooner or later, your headstone is going to be smooth, which makes me wonder who, who, will, be, who will remember us when we're gone. Well, certainly our children and probably our grandchildren will remember Papa and Nay Nay and Nay Nay and Nee Nee and Kiki Ki and all those all those names. Granny, Granny, Sherry always wanted to be called Granny. From the time we were married, she said, I can't wait to have grandbabies. Didn't even have any children at the time. So she was excited to be called Granny. She wanted to be known as Granny. Our great grandchildren, they may know our name, they may know a little something about us, but and stories will be passed down from generation to generation. But I wonder, how about our great, 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 great grandchildren? How about those four, five, six, seven, eight, nine generations out? Once our headstones are smooth, we will have vanished from the face of the earth as if we'd never even been here. If that's the case, if that's true, then why bother? Why bother? In the words of Solomon, all is vanity. You 
live well or sloppily. Some of you have heard me say that I see people die with six-pack abs and 12-pack guts. They all die. Regardless, they still leave this world. Why bother coming to church? Why bother living responsibly? Why bother caring for people uh, in their needs? We might as well live as however we please to suit ourselves or in, in the 60s language. If it feels good, do it. Do, do what, good, what, what feels good to you. We might as well do whatever we feel like doing. Shuck our responsibilities and live only for the moment if that's the case. If in the end of the end, of, of, when it's all summed up, if there's nothing more than smooth headstones to pass on, then why bother? Or as I've witnessed over the past years, uh, cremation has become more and more popular where we don't even have headstones anymore. Many times folks will have their ashes. I had, I had a couple spread their ashes out in the ocean uh, down in Florida or go to Myrtle Beach. Or just two months ago, I had a, had a first cousin that had his ashes spread on the infield of the diamond, the baseball diamond, named after his 14-year-old son that died in 1972. And so there's not even a headstone to be smooth. But I want you to see something more important this morning. The Christian faith is linear in nature. What I mean by linear is that we're going somewhere. We have a goal in mind. We set our, we set our hearts, we set our minds with a laser focus on the kingdom of God. We're marching to Zion. We're marching and we pick up that banner for the years that we live and we carry that banner throughout the times of our lives and at some point we lay our lives down. Most of the rest of the world religions live in a never-ending cycle of life, of birth, life, and death. Birth, life, and death. Birth, life, and death. We don't believe that way because we believe at the end of our lives, life continues. It's not the end of our lives. It's just another chapter in our journey toward the kingdom of God. So instead of being trapped in that never-ending cycle, we're going somewhere, church. We have a goal in mind. We're marching full of the hope of Jesus Christ in a troubled world. We're marching somewhere. We've got a goal in mind, and we will achieve that goal by the power of the grace of God. We have a destination in mind, and we carry it for our lifetime. So for a Christian, there is no end. It's just simply another phase in the journey before and after death. We do see those characteristics in our, in our parents uh, the, the kids the kids come along and, and we see those same characteristics that's passed down from generation to generation. And through the study of DNA, we learn, we can learn a lot of things. I was reading where, where Genghis Khan had a Mongolian war chief from several hundred years ago. He, he conquered a lot of the world and he raped and pillaged his way across Asia to the point that a half of percent of the whole world's population is related to Genghis Khan. You may have some in here that's related to Genghis Khan. I found that pretty interesting. I've learned more about my mother. My mother is, well, I had a, I, I'll tell you about my mommy. My mommy is a character. Um, that's, to, that's to put it lightly. And I had a nurse in the ICU after dealing with my mom for about a day or so. And, and she looked at my mom and she said, your mother's a freak of nature. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, how'd you get to know my mom so quickly? Uh, it's amazing. My mom was the baby of a very large family. And she was just a play pretty to all those older 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 children so so they spoiled her to death and any of you guys that have ever married a baby girl in the family i did i represent that and some of you guys maybe you married a baby you know what i'm talking about and men if if, if wives if you married a baby son you've probably got it worse <laughs> they we spoil them don't we and so Sherry's dad spoiled her for, for, for 18 years, and I just picked the banner up and kept right on doing it. So, so my mom, my mom was one of those people that was just, my mom has her agenda. She's never driven a day in her life, but she goes where she wants to go, when she wants to go, on her schedule. 
And you, I, believe me, she does. That's just, that's my mom. So, but after dealing with little Daisy comes along, my little youngest grandchild, who is the, at the end of the fourth, the fourth child. And after dealing with my little Daisy, I began to understand my mom. What I couldn't understand for 57 years, I understand my mom now more than ever. So just like all those similarities, just like all those similarities that are passed down from generation to generation, the ancient world did not have the ability to study DNA but they would have certainly noticed those family traits that's passed down from generation to generation. You're hard-headed just like your mother. You shake your head just like Granny. You're smart just like Uncle Rick. I can just, I can hear him saying. It ain't that funny. You see, you're, you're going to inherit those traits of your ancestors whether you actually even knew your ancestors. Some of you have some old, old pictures back in the early days of photography, and you think you're looking at your son. You think you're looking at your daughter. Those traits are passed down from generation to generation, and those spiritual traits that are common in families, they're passed down as well. I have, I've always had a very Christian family on both sides of my parents. Both sides of my parents, both sides of my parents have started churches and the families have. Both sides have always been spiritual folks. At, at any given time in my life, I've always had at least 10 pastors in my families. And so we're surrounded by, by, by the church, by Christian folks. Those things are passed along too. So while your tombstone may be smooth in a couple of hundred years. Your legacy will live on into the world to come. We'll continue to live on through your descendants, even if they're totally unaware that they're acting just like you in a hundred years, and you find out that, well, you'll never know, really, will you? So, but, 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 but it's true. But that's not all. You see, the Christian faith says more about the end not being the end. This is the most glorious part of all that we, that we have to offer the world is the end is not the end. There are several references in the Scripture that refers to the book of life, the source, the source book of life, the book of remembrance that, that God refers to, Jesus refers to, in the prophecy of Malachi, the very last book of the Old Testament, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. And in the last book of the New Testament, we read in the book of Revelation 20, John says that in a vision he saw the dead, the small, and the great standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, and that was the book of life. So my question for you this morning, for you to be pondering throughout this message, is my name in the book of life, the book that really matters? To have your name on the book of this church, it will not get you any further than the door of this church. It's more important that your name is in the book of life, the one that God has that says Jesus Christ is my Lord. And John says, as John saw that, that great that great crowd of people around, and the books were opened. And once in the Gospels, Jesus said to his followers, Rejoice, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So I want you to hear this morning that God knows your name. God knows who you are. God knows what you're dealing with. And God wants a relationship through his Son with you. God knows and understands all that's going on. We live in a crazy, mixed-up world. It seems, everything seems so backwards. It just seems so crazy. God knows every attitude and action, the good and the bad. God knows you and still loves you. And there's one more thing that the Christian faith says about the end not being the end. Of course, our resurrection unto eternal life. The, the Apostle Paul takes this up in the passage that you heard my brother Rick read just a few minutes ago in one of his letters to the church of Corinth. He said, For if the dead are not raised, 
then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are dead in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied above all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, for since death came through a man, then life will also come through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. When our headstones become smooth, you won't be able to read the inscription of your life, your death, and all that happened will not have complete. You will have completely vanished without a trace. But you see, there will be a trace. There will be a stone, a marker, a grave. Even though it's not clearly identifiable, just like that, traces of us, traces of our descendants will live on into eternity. Don't you know at this church, just at this particular church, 228 years ago, that, that, that there were saints of God that come into this community. They built this house of God and that we're the living and breathing example of the seeds that they planted all those generations ago. As I said in the last service, I can remember, I can, I can close my eyes and think back at my other churches that I've participated in and, and remember those old saints of God that would sit here and maybe that one would testify every now and then or, or maybe that, that one was, that was faithful to sit in the same pew. Do, can you all close it? Do you all remember those, some of those? Can you do that? Say yes, preacher. Well, I want to remind you something. You are now those older folks. <laughs> You're the ones that our children are watching and one day they'll close their eyes and they'll think that very thing about you that you, just, that you just did. We pass on a part of our nature to future generations. So what gives us tremendous hope and, and tremendous excitement as we live eternally with God, if the Christian faith is anything, it is a resurrection faith. It's a resurrection faith. Without that, there is no life. Throughout the Scriptures, we find references to, to new life in Christ. There's life after death. So what, a way that we, what way do we live today really determines that by knowing that this life is not the end but the beginning. What a powerful way to, to live our lives, to understand the reality of our death, to understand the fact that you are terminal what a glorious thing as you've heard me say many times unless you are ready to die you are not ready to live unless you're ready to die church you're not ready to live because otherwise the ball and chain of death is is a terrible burden it's a ball and chain around your neck and life with Jesus is so different than our current experiences as the Bible writers use fantastic terms as a way to describe and express the glories of heaven and what we have to look forward to. However, as it is written in Corinthians, Paul says, What no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. For those that have their name written in the book of life. The biblical writers have a difficult time describing a time when there's no more wars and no more sickness and no more pain. And since we humans, we can't really see beyond, beyond death, past the grave. It's hard to comprehend what God has for his children. John the Revelator, he said, he said, I saw a holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying. And the pain of those older things, those old order of things, has passed away. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. I get happy to think that one day there will be no more tears. There's coming a day when we'll lay these old physical bodies down at a graveside, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And as I love to share, 
around the graveside many times. Listen, listen. I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. We will be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. Therefore, I love therefore, because of all of that, death has no victory. Because of all of that, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor with the Lord is not in vain. Thanks be to God. For the eternal promise we have of the life that we have in Jesus Christ. Because one day your tombstone will be smooth. One day you will have vanished from the face of the earth. And the only thing that will remain is the faithfulness that you shared with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is your name recorded in the book of life today? Is your name there? I pray it is. I pray it is. It's just a matter of saying, Jesus, come into my heart. I receive your forgiveness. I pray that every person that leaves this place has their name written in the book of life. As the old hymn that we're going to share in our reflection hymn, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there.